I'm your host, Evie, uh, here with you from Listener Powered 90.3 FM KEXP. We are broadcasting live in Seattle. We also stream 24-7 at KEXP.org and through the free mobile apps. And KEXP is a nonprofit, so performances just like this one are made possible from donations from listeners just like you. So thank you so much. And I'm so happy to be here today with Biba Doobie. Thank you so much for joining us and whenever you're ready. Sweet. Thanks for having us. Listening to Biba Doobie live here on KEXP. You just heard 1036 from the new record, Beatopia, came out uh, in July of this year. Sounded so good. <laughs> We're just doing a little instrument change here.
Beepa Doobie live here on KEXP, sounding incredible. Thank you so much. You just heard talk from Beatopia again. The new record came out in July of this year. the deal Tell me I wonder if the time was do you feel I could have been a realized I'm thinking that I just don't get the deal to Beba Doobie live here on KEXP. Again, sounding fantastic. Thank you all so much for being here. We're just doing some more instrument changes. No, get rid of instruments. Oh, get rid of instruments. Okay, <laughs> it's getting wow. serious. <laughs> we have one more you just heard, Don't Get the Deal, again from Beatopia, the record that came out in July of this year. And we have one more whenever you're ready. Sure, I like it, and I 
It's Biba Doobie live here in our live room, the KEXP studios. Thank you all so much for being here today. You sound fantastic. And hi, B. I'm going to direct all my questions at you. Are you okay with that? Of course. <laughs> okay. Go ahead. Well, it's good to have you here. It's good to see you. I know you did a um, live on KEXP at home, but we actually get to have mm -hmm. you in the studio uh, now, which is really exciting. And I'm hoping that you'll introduce who you have in the studio with, today, with you today, starting to your left. Of course. Um, so Eliana on bass. Um, Luca on the drums and Jacob on the guitar. <laughs> Hi everyone. <laughs> so B, you released your first song, I think it was five years ago, right? Five years ago and you oh were God, really Gosh. I, you were seventeen. Yeah. Right when you and are you're twenty two now. Am yeah. I, yeah. Do, is it weird that I know that much about you? <laughs> um, when you, so you were 17 years old, five years ago, you released your first song. And then now five years later, you're like headlining tours. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. You're traveling around the world. You have like millions of followers on social media. I, how do you do it? Like, how is it feeling to have reached this level of fame in that, in that short amount of time? Oh God. Fame is such a bizarre word. <laughs> um, yeah. I don't, um, it is very overwhelming when you put it that way. Mm. I just try my hardest not to think about it too much. Um, and it is what's strange is what's strange is that um, there was a gap because of COVID. So I kind of went from like playing, you know, small venues to you know, in my opinion, quite large for me. Yeah. Um, and it is scary, but it's also super fun. Yeah. Yeah. If you're enjoying it, mm -hmm. that's important. And this new album that you played some songs from today, Beatopia, came out earlier this year in July. Can you maybe tell me why you chose that name for your record? What does it mean to you? <laughs> um, Beatopia originated from this idea I had when I was seven of this made-up world I kind of escaped to. Um, and I had, I don't know, it was a weird time because I think when I look back at it now, it's, it was obviously like a form of escapism mm -hmm. um, for like a seven-year-old girl. And I made this like amazing poster with like, I created a language, I created all the city names and um, and I left it in my class. And um, this teacher called Mr. Roberts. Mr. Roberts. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, pinned it in front of the whole class when I, um, when I was not in class and I came back to everyone laughing at me and it was all just like, just a bit embarrassing. And um, I chose to forget about it. But then I realized, like just after the pandemic, when I was making an album with um, Jacob, I was like, you know what? I don't know what we're gonna make. We could make an EP, a song or an album, but I just want it to be called Beatopia. Yeah. And here it is. I'm sorry about that story. <laughs> that teacher is busted. It's honestly the least of the of what happened. So. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, the the record is amazing. We love it. We've been playing the hell out of it here. Thank and you. the evolution in your sound really in the last five years, like over, I, you know, the, I think the first time I started listening to music was that Space Cadet EP. I love that one. And you should know that every time I play um, your music, or especially when I started playing that EP, people respond to it every time when they hear it on air. Oh. You are loved. <laughs> but um, I, I've loved all the EPs, both albums, both full lengths have been so great. Um, can you kind of tell me what, uh, how the sound evolved to where it is now and what life was like while you were writing this record? Um, I guess it was, um, it felt like there was no rules or like n n we weren't kind of, pressured into making something that we were forced into making we were just stuck in this room together um uh, you me and Jacob um, <laughs> um and stoned and just having like just being able to do whatever the hell we wanted to do um and I think with my last with my previous records I almost felt like I was trying to prove something constantly um especially with fake it flowers it was like as much as I loved the record and I look back at it fondly it was definitely a phase and I remember when I was doing the press for the record I definitely grew out of that phase. Um, so it was quite difficult talking about something that you just had so, that you'd moved on from. Mm -hmm. And when creating Beatopia, it was like how I was at that moment and what was going on in my life at that moment and what I was feeling. And it was definitely like uncovering a lot of like repressed feelings I tried to ignore. And, and it was really therapeutic. And, and um, as much as like sonically, how much I love the record, like lyrically and, and what it had made me 
do and what had made me feel, I think, is what is what is most important to me, I think. Mm. Yeah. Jacob, you have anything you want to add to that? What was life like for you? We just I think we were just in our heads a lot mm. and we were just sitting in the studio and listening to a lot of music and we like we referenced quite heavily and we made like loads of playlists and I think it was just encompassing what was really inspiring us at that time. Do you remember what was on those playlists? Inquiring minds. Me. I do, want I to know. do. But, but people might have to find it. They might have to they might okay. have to dig it out. Okay. Maybe you can share it with me. He's yeah. just not How's telling you. Okay. He's like, I remember <laughs> everything, but you can't know. <laughs> it's out there somewhere. Yeah. Okay. Well, you know, the, on Beatopia you have some pretty seasoned collaborators like you had Maddie and George, I read, from the 1975. Um, Jack from Bombay Bicycle Club. Am I getting the right? Yeah, I love mm -hmm. that band. How did those collaborators kind of influence what we hear on the record today? Um, I think I've never um, been in... I haven't been in many sessions, but I think what made it so fun this time was that I was doing it with someone who understood what I wanted my music to sound like. And um, Jacob being the kind of put, we there was like two of my brains in that room. So mm -hmm. as much as they had a lot of um, input in what we wanted to make, it still sounded like it was part of our, like our record, and it sounded like Biba Doobie. Um, and we wanted like all these all the people that um, worked on the record with us, um, extremely talented, amazing people. Um, but I think what what I liked the most was that they brought the best out of us and what we could make. Um, That's the best possible situation. Mm -hmm. I love to hear that. Was it fun to work with them? Yeah, it was super fun. fun. Good. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, as you mentioned before, when you're talking about the, the land of Beatopia, um, and I say B and you say Bay, Beatopia, yeah. Beatopia. Um, <laughs> you started making music, or I've, so I've read, you, you started making music as a way to find some release from life. Um, I think as we, many people do that same thing. And do you feel like when you're making music now, do you still find it as cathartic as you did once when you started making it? Oh yeah, no, definitely. It's yeah. like, it was hard because... Um, like music was always such a hobby for me and now it's mm. like, oh my God, it's a job. <laughs> but I still, you know, depend on it quite a lot, um, being able to express what I can't necessarily express in talking words. Mm -hmm. I can do in singing words with chords. You do it well. I just always, you know, I'm not a musician myself, so I'm always like, man, I mean, like amongst all the shows and the tours and the labels and contracts and all the business, I hope that it's still, it, that you still are able to find a way to feel creative. Oh, yeah, no, definitely. Um, we, we feel like it's it almost, ma it, it makes, it's making me itch um, to be creative. Like I want to write an album right now. Mm. Um, but it is very overwhelming and quite distracting, um, the <laughs> amount of work <laughs> to do and how yeah. many tours we have to do um but you know it's um it's all part of it's all part of the job I guess and, and I love playing shows and I love being able to watch people sing sing the words to my music mm. um but yes I just cannot wait to write a new record and go home and make music yeah <laughs> I can really tell that you love music that's a that's a cool thing to see well uh, where do you find yourself where, where are you or where do you feel happiest these days what do you do that makes you happy um, Other than the writing music that we were just talking oh about. Oh, shit. I'm not allowed to start. Sorry. That's okay. That's okay. okay. <laughs> um, honestly, <laughs> probably like writing music. I know you said not to say that, but <laughs> it's like <laughs> okay. at home in my house, like making music. That is like where I'm happiest. Do you have like a favorite outfit that you wear my or like favorite slippers? Oh, my goodness. Hmm. If you don't, that's okay. I'm just thinking of myself. I need one. Yeah. I think I need one. I feel like it changes. Sometimes I would wear the same thing for a week and that's when I feel most creative. Mm. And just like, I think it's when I'm like most slobbiest and most grossest. <laughs> I'm like, okay, there's no pressure of me going out. So I might as well just stay at home and just write sad songs or something. Just helps you focus. Exactly. So I don't have to focus on anything else. 
Well, um, we, again, we love this new record, Beatopia. We're so glad that you came here today. Thank you very much for sharing your music with us and, and for that amazing performance. And thanks to everybody else. We appreciate you being here too. Um, we hope you can come back soon. And I just want to say another thank you to you, our listeners, for watching the session. Um, you can find more sessions just like this one if you go to KEXP's YouTube channel. Make sure you subscribe and you can see these sessions as they post live. Um, and please consider supporting artists like Beepa Doobie and um, give them a platform to share their music and their art and give a donation today at kexp.org slash live, a gift in any amount, a donation in any amount really helps to support these in-studio performances. So this has been Beepa Doobie and this is live on KEXP. Discover new music at listenerpoweredkexp.org.